but a lot, a lot of work to do. Coming up, third string action between Sparks and between Easterbrooks. There are the numbers right there, plus 73. Can he do it? We'll find out. Time now, though, for the Duncan Challenge. I'm Frank Malico. Time now for the Duncan Challenge. America runs on Duncan, and today's contestant is Marie Webster. She's at a Haverhill Mass. Marie, good luck. Take it away. Now, Marie rolls a strike. She'll be entered for a chance for a trip for two anywhere in the continental U.S. If she knocks down the special Duncan Camel pin, she has a shot at a $100 Duncan gift card. And let's see how she does. Oh, so close. But Marie doesn't go home empty-handed. She went to $25 Duncan gift card. Thanks for playing the Duncan Challenge. Welcome back, everybody. That is Skip Easterbrooks. We are beginning string number three. And as you can see, Skip has a long way to go. Down 70-plus pins. Can it be done, Mike? Oh, sure. Mathematically, it certainly can. But that doesn't help his cause. I was going to say, that's not a good opener there. The that wood uh, could be helpful. It's the two-pin, right side. That's exactly it. He had other thoughts, apparently entertaining, trying to go to the left-hand side of the two-pin as opposed to using the wood directly. I mean, the wood isn't angled perfectly, but it gives you a better chance, perhaps, than how he tried it. We'll find out right here. Well, yeah. Yeah, hit it a little too center cut. Flips a couple, though. Leaves two. Eight box. Let's skip Easterbrook. During the break, Skip was kind of looking at us over here, and he had a 100-plus pin lead over uh, Scott LaPierre in our last show, and... Uh, what comes around goes around, and he just smiled a little bit. Although this game cushioned by the triple strike and the trip to Aruba. Nicely done. Beautiful shot there. Between the one and the three, six pin goes for a well done spare. He'll need a whole lot more of those, and he'll need. Uh, Young Jason to not do quite as well as he has. Jason's average is a 118. Well, so he's far, he's thrown a 134 to 142. So, playing play very well. And sometimes, Frank, those averages can be a little bit deceiving because in uh, in candlepin bowling, different houses have different degrees of difficulty in scoring. You could have anywhere five to seven or eight pins difference, one house to the next. So he might be a 125 bowler if he was on a league here, as opposed to where he is in Maine. And the pins, newer pins, that, make a big difference. And these does. pins are new, folks, so they uh, they don't score as well because they're not as rounded on the bottom and beat up. Well, you just look at that. That probably exactly. would have gone down in an older house or That's an older pin. Timing of your comments was perfect. That should have gone down. So just a four box there for an opener for Sparks. He sure gets his money's worth, man, doesn't he? I'm going to say he just ramped it up a little bit on that chuck, huh? <laughs> Nowhere near the, near the head pin on that, and he, he leaves two pins in the back. One pin and went down, back door. If you listen quietly, you can hear the pin scream just a little bit. He can chuck. He's trying to cap it over. And the slide of tip to no avail. So he opens with a 12. And Easterbrook's working on his pair. He can pick up a few pins here. That door is wide open. He needs to kick it down and then some. That triple strike would be very nice right now. Close. Cannot afford to miss this or any other simple spare leave this game. White Tina looking on. Kingpin's all that remains from back-to-back -back spares here. But a nice fill with a nine. Slam dunk that one. Well, he's gotten 15 pins back. And then whatever he fills on his spare. And some more TNT bowling bucks possible with another mark here for Skip Easterbrooks. The show. Six fill there. Not a bad fill, but a difficult spare to make. That pin in the back doesn't want to go down most of the time. Got her Kelsey. Watching on. McKenzie back there in the black shirt. Mom in the middle, right behind Jason's head. And no money, but a chance for a 10 box. And that's Mackenzie. She's our TV queen. She likes to be on TV. She was the bubble girl. That's right. A couple weeks back. Got it. 10 box.
So Jason Sparks. Looking to try to do a little bit better after those first two boxes of four and an eight. And he just did it. Be a pretty easy spare. His home bowling center in Westbrook, Maine is Colonial. He did his qualifying for Candlepins for Dollars at the Big 20 in Scarborough, Maine, one of our many bowling centers that you can get in touch with if you'd like to be on our show. Brother Scott there in the orange shirt, the green cap, and next to him is roommate Todd up there in Portland. And they're going to enjoy that. There they are. Clapping away. Spare it up. Sparks gets back on the beam here. Nice fill, eight. Kind of double dribbled the ball at the line, which took some of the uh, the torque off, but he still got a pretty good uh, result with the five and the nine remaining. That was a shot of his father, Jerry Jr. there, watching on. And misses completely there, left side. And again, sometimes that curve can catch you. 38. So Skip Easterbrook has picked up 15 after four boxes. But as they say, has a long way to go, down 58 pence right now. In six boxes, which means you have to outscore your opponent by better than nine pins for every one of those frames to win. Another way to look at it. Don't tell Skip that. No. <laughs> Skip knows he's been around a while. One remains. And one and done. So that's 10 bucks. You may remember Skip, if not from last week, from our first ladder series. He was our number two seed. And he came up against Sean Baker, who crawled all the way up from the sixth seed and then met his match with Gene Gallagher. But back then, Skip had a beard, a gray beard. And he said he went home, watched the show, and didn't like it, so he shaved it. What do you know, last week uh, came back and uh, won the trip to Aruba. I don't think it's coming back anytime soon. Wife Tina approves of the change. Kept the mustache, though. He was beaten by 14 pins by Sean Baker back in March. He talked about that when uh, Baker was the number six seed. Uh, he needs marks if he wants to take on Ryan Tripp, who waits in the wings at a low. He'll take the 10 box, though, a 73 after six. And Jason Sparks right now with an open box with a 38. Very thin hit, leaving just the five pin. Everything scrambled, but nothing took the five. Oh, oh. the soft shoe routine there, <laughs> huh? With the sachet left side. I think, down. I think the, the breeze from his ball took it down. That <laughs> could be. Oh, look he at that. did that exact same hit just a couple of boxes ago. Unreal. Where he leaves the nine and the ten from an off-head pin hit. And he loves how that's setting up. Good wood. Just keep it on the lane. Center cut. Oh, oh, geez. A little more to the right, but it works anyway. So back-to-back -back spares for Jason Sparks and Skip Easterbrooks. Well, he's going to Aruba, everybody. He's got a lot of work to do. We've got four more to go in this third string. Stay with us, everybody, as Kennel Pins for Dollars continues. Reversal Mortgage Group at 888-935-1660 and talk to a reverse mortgage professional. And there is Skip Easterbrooks. He is down 66 pins. So playing out the string here, we got four boxes to go in this match in our third string here. And a little punch out left side. He's going to like that a little bit better. We'll see if he remembers his friends and sends us a postcard from I Aruba. I asked him. It's first thing oh, I you said. Did, huh? I, we expect a postcard from Aruba. And he said, don't worry. It's coming. And a nine box for Skip. Hey, a big shout out to our sponsors. Want to thank Toyota, Dunkin' Donuts, of course, supplying the coffee and the donuts here at Pilgrim Lane, Universal Mortgage Group, TNT Vacations. We all know Skip is on his way with his wife, Tina. Fine folks of Crown Trophy and Leisure Line, silk screen and embroidery. They make the shirts. 
And right now that shirt's looking pretty good. Big smile. Take another look at it here. Head pin hit, of course, on the pocket side. Left is the kingpin, right off the left sidewall, and it's a strike. Well, he's still got two more frames, too, to perhaps add on to that. Never know. Here's Jason Sparks, kid out of Portland, Maine, bowling very well. Coming off at spare there. Another great young bowler, Ryan Tripp, out of Lowell with a 120 average, will be taking on Mr. Sparks next week. Got it. And, oh, hard to tell from it here. Is. I thought perhaps you right. clipped the, uh, the nine there. From a distance. Saw Dad again here just a moment ago. He must be very happy these days. Saw the coaching over the years. Ten box for Jason Sparks. Plus 72 right now. You know, he misses last. I thought he'd get a few more, but the action on that ball is really terrific. Oh, it's the same as last time, leaving the back pin on a, a similar type of spare. Taking his time that time, though. Kind of ferret it out. Back-to-back -back pin boxes. He could, with a couple of marks and good fills, hit 400. Needs a 124. Skip. This is a cut shot. Most of the time. Fill that strike up with an eight. After eight. And that one not finding its way to an eight box. And he will complete the match and this string right now. 108 so far. Getting out of here with uh, better than $400 in cash. And the trip that we have talked about to Aruba. Get out in time to mow his lawn and think about yeah, what it. lies ahead. Nice shot. Oh, uh, didn't hit the uh, the front piece of wood as squarely as perhaps he would have liked to. Leaving the uh, the two pin and a possible 118 and a 321 if he picks this up. And that he does. 118. And Jason Sparks has the match, now trying to finish strong. So 100, 103, a 118, and a 3-2-1. For Mr. Easterbrooks, and here's Jason Sparks, who will uh, live to bowl another day as he moves on. The four seed, he'll take on the number three seed. Gentle doing there nine box onto the 91 even 100 double strike could get him to 400 double strike and five four not gonna happen right now he'll settle for a trip to go see mr. Trip. Ryan trip yeah I didn't even try to do that <laughs> he's a good bowler in his own right so he's out of Lowell he's our three seat software engineer that's coming up Six for nine, a 109. So that's it, folks. Kip Easterbrooks is defeated by Jason Sparks by 60 plus pins. There's the mathematics right there. We'll show you the numbers once again. And if you'd like to win a brand new Toyota pickup truck, we're going to pick the names for the drawing. Coming up next as Candle Pins for Dollars continues. Welcome back, everybody. You see the final numbers there. A landslide for Jason Sparks. The young man out of Maine beats Skip Easterbrooks, who, uh, by the way, is going to Aruba, though, and feeling pretty good as well. Hey, how would you like to win a brand new Toyota pickup truck? A Tundra. Easy to do. All you got to do is listen to this. Are you driven to win? Want the key to victory? All you got to do is practice. Austin's WB wants you to enter for a chance to bowl on TV to win this Toyota Tundra Limited Double Cab 4x4. Just enter at bostonswb.com. The only question is, how bad do you want it? Yeah! Right. 
Want to wish a lot of luck to Thomas Winslow of Maine, also Mike Murray, Tracy Gordon, Robert Pacaleri, and David Cog. Good luck to you guys. So we move on to our third week here of ladder series number four, and let's take a look at how it sets up. Easterbrooks is out. Sparks is moving on. He takes on a fellow by the name of Ryan Tripp. Ryan Tripp's been on television a number of times. In fact, he came in ninth place in the Easter Sunday tournament a couple of years ago, so he knows what a lot of pressure and a lot of bowling can mean under the lights. And that's our next show. Until then, I'm Frank Malico for Mike Morin. We'll see you next week, folks, and have a great week. Good night, everybody.